Without realizing it, you could be sending out signals that tell you are not a confident, poised and elegant leader. And if left unattended, they could really damage your future career aspirations and your leadership success. In this video, I'm going to teach you seven things that tell you are not a confident, poised and elegant leader so you can get to fixing these mistakes and reach your leadership success quicker. The first mistake is you downplay your status. When you are not truly a confident, poised and elegant leader, you will minimize your importance in the team or the company. You will downplay your position as well as your talents and accomplishments because you want to appear humble. You might refuse to talk about what you do with any pride. You might deflect the importance of your position. You might shift the attention to someone else. If you've ever said, I'm just an assistant or I'm only the team leader, here's the department head, you're probably guilty of this. Whereas confident, poised and elegant leaders are proud of their status and of their position and they can talk about it with confidence, not arrogance, but confidence. I'm the marketing assistant in this department. I'm the team leader. Do you see the difference? The second thing that tells you are not a confident, poised or elegant leader is that you don't know how to talk about what you do. Meaning when you're asked the question, what do you do? You don't know how to answer it clearly. You're confused as to your importance and function in the team and the company. As a result, you give a confused version of what you do when you're asked this question. Kara, what do you do? Um, I kind of work with professionals who want to become leaders and I help them out with things. Obviously, this is an example of not knowing how to talk about what I do, which doesn't make me look like a confident, poised or elegant leader. Whereas I should be responding with something like this. I'm a leadership coach and I work with emerging leaders to help them improve their communication and leadership skills so they can get promoted. And just like that, I've clearly explained to the person interested what I do. I encourage you to spend some time crafting one sentence that clearly explains what you do. Get clear on the value that you contribute, the value that you bring to the team and to the company. This will be extremely helpful when you go to networking events and when you meet new people. The third thing that tells you are not a confident, poised or elegant leader is that you don't use confident body language. Anytime you meet somebody new, They'll be tuning in to your body language within the first few seconds. They'll be taking cues from your body language to make assumptions about who you are. Most of the time this happens subconsciously, so they won't be aware they're doing it. But regardless, it will have a dramatic impact on the first impression that you give them and every subsequent impression as well. Body language is something that reflects how you feel about yourself in that moment. So if you are not comfortable in your position, if you're not comfortable with your current status, if you're downplaying your status, like we talked about previously, this will show up in your body language. You might avoid eye contact. You might tilt your head to one side. You might use bad posture, slump your shoulders in an attempt to become invisible and unnoticeable. But confident, poised and elegant leaders don't do this. They are proud of their position. They don't downplay their status and they certainly don't try to hide themselves. If you detect or even suspect that you're guilty of this, you need to fix your body language. If you want to learn the body language that leaders use, then check out this video, save it to your watch later list and watch it after this one. I'll also put a link in the description below. The fourth thing that tells you are not a confident, poised and elegant leader is that you allow others to break your composure, meaning you allow others to trigger you into being extremely angry or upset and you visibly show this. For example, when you have a toxic coworker who says something offensive to you, you delve into an angry outburst or you might start crying. Rather than handle that person or that situation in a calm and a detached manner. I realize that when people are toxic towards you, it does trigger emotions within you. This is unavoidable. We're not robots who don't have emotions, but it's how you handle and respond to those emotions that says whether you are a true, confident, poised and elegant leader or not. And it really comes down to whether you give that person the power to break your confident, poised and elegant leader composure. One thing that helps me in situations like this is to remember that I have no control over 
other people's behavior or the words that they use. I have no control over this, but I do have control over how I react and how I respond. I can respond or react in an angry outburst kind of way, or I can start crying, or I can respond in a calm, composed manner, just like a confident, poised and elegant leader would. For example, when a toxic coworker uses toxic behavior toward me, I can respond with something like this. Candace, I'd appreciate it if you don't roll your eyes at me in meetings. If you have something to say to me, please come and talk to me. Being assertive is the key to maintaining your composure when dealing with a difficult situation, just like confident, poised and elegant leaders do. The fifth thing that tells you are not a confident, poised and elegant leader is that you always look rushed and frazzled. Everywhere you go, you look like you've just run 10 blocks. You always look like you're in a hurry or late for something. You look disheveled with your appearance rather than calm and, of course, composed. In the film The Devil Wears Prada, the character played by Anne Hathaway started off in her new job by looking rushed and frazzled as well, but then transformed into a confident, poised and elegant professional. This transformation can happen in real life too. You just have to make some changes to the way you conduct yourself at work. Be as organized as possible to minimize unexpected events. Don't overbook your schedule. This is bound to make you stressed and frazzled. Delegate when you can to relieve the pressure from you. And on a side note here, for emerging leaders, delegation is incredibly important. In conversations that I've had with senior leaders or even executives, particularly in law firms, they've said to me that delegation is one of the key skills that they look for in people in those that they're looking to promote. So if you can demonstrate that you have a delegation skill before you get promoted, this is one area that will help you to move faster and separate yourself from the competition and get promoted easier. Back to the tips to not look rushed and frazzled. The last thing you need to do is to breathe. This is really the only way that you can fill your mind and your body with calm in those stressful times. So make sure that you breathe. The sixth thing that tells you are not a confident, poised or elegant leader is that your clothes don't match that image. In other words, your clothes don't make you look like a confident, poised and elegant leader. Going back to the film Devil Wears Prada, in the beginning of that film, the character played by Anne Hathaway, she wore clothes that were frumpy, that were too big for her, and that were really mismatched. Now, on top of that, they didn't match the industry in which she worked. This led her co-workers to see immediately that she didn't fit into the team, it caused them to question her level of competence, and it caused them to lose respect for her. No matter how much you don't want your clothes to matter, they do. Just like with your body language, your clothes are extremely important when other people are making assumptions about who you are. They will take cues from the clothes that you wear to make assumptions about your level of competence, your level of intelligence, and also whether you fit into the team or not. This doesn't mean that you have to wear a formal suit every day to work, but what it does mean is that you need to put some thought into what you wear, especially to the office, and make sure that you dress for the industry that you are in. If dressing for your industry is something that you want to learn about, I delve into that topic in my online video course, Business Etiquette 101, Social Skills for a Success. This is currently available on Udemy. I will put a discount coupon and a link in the description below. The seventh thing that tells you are not a confident, poised or elegant leader is that you communicate in a disjointed way. This means that your thoughts are all over the place and as a result, your communication is all over the place as well. I've talked previously in videos that your speech is a reflection of your thinking. In order to have clear speech and avoid disjointed speech, you need to start with your thoughts. You need to make sure that the thoughts in your mind are clear. You have clarity on that in order for you to communicate those thoughts in a clear way. This is the only way that you can articulate your thoughts well, which is incredibly important for emerging leaders because much of your career success will depend on how well you communicate, how well you can share ideas in meetings, how well you can present complicated information clearly, how quickly you can get to the point. 
Confident, poised, and elegant leaders can do all of these things really well. And just like everything else I've talked about in this video, you can learn it too. This video up here should be your starting point where you'll learn how to articulate your thoughts clearly. Once you're done with that video, head over to my playlist, be articulate and well spoken. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you next week in another video.